radio frequency energy, or RF energy, is all around us. From the sound of a radio to the signal of your cell phone, we use it every day without thinking twice. Without RF energy, modern technology that we depend on would not exist. We learn from it, we communicate with it, and we connect with it. But our enemies would use it to destroy us. Because of this, it must be protected. This is where electronic warfare comes in. Electronic warfare, or EW, is, in essence, controlling and exploiting the radio frequency spectrum. The role this plays in the Air Force is to keep our aircraft flying even under threat of an enemy's EW attack, to break the enemy kill chain, and complete the mission. Here at Edwards Air Force Base, we've designed a facility and infrastructure and dedicated a group of individuals to test and evaluate our weapon assets and ensure we maintain the upper hand in the EW fight. Our facility is called the Benefield Anechoic Facility, or the BAF, and our men and women in the 772nd Test Squadron, part of the 412th Electronic Warfare Group, champion its success. The initial facility, the BAF, was built in 1989, but later the 772nd added several manned cockpit simulators and the Digital Integrated Air Defense System for modeling and simulation. We at the 772nd Test Squadron are tasked with providing our nation and its allies with expertise and credible capabilities to survive on the battlefield. There are multiple venues employed to achieve these results, but we will focus on the BAF's unique test mission and its contribution to our air superiority. The BAF's goal is to replicate an open air range by reproducing various combat environments associated with different areas of responsibility. One of the ways it does this is by providing free space radio frequency threat generation and monitoring like that seen in open air range testing and combat. Its controlled isolated battle space environment can simulate RF threats while the system being tested can respond to them at full power. While it's ideal to test in an actual open air scenario, the BAF can greatly reduce cost and help testers control the test environment. Being in the free space environment of the BAF also duplicates how RF energy may bounce off the aircraft structure into its various antennas, just as it would in open air range testing and combat. The BAF measures 250 feet wide by 264 feet long and 70 feet high. Because of its size, it can fit almost any aircraft in the DoD inventory. An 80-foot diameter turntable can rotate aircraft 360 degrees, and two 40-ton hoists allow lifting fighter-sized aircraft to optimize the free space environment and provide for antenna look-down aspects. In addition, ground power, cooling, and other equipment and resources make it possible to turn on everything on the aircraft, save the engines themselves. The BAF is large enough to be thought of as an open air range under one roof. Since it is RF shielded, providing 100 decibels of isolation from 0.01 to 18 gigahertz, testing can be done in a secure environment at all security levels. To reduce the RF reflections off the BAF walls, floor, and ceiling, the BAF utilizes various types of radiation absorbent material. This material can be positioned to fit the specific needs of each test program and coupled with the BAF's size, allows aircraft to operate fire control radars, electronic countermeasure systems, and various other radiating subsystems at full power with very few limitations. To achieve desirable quiet zones below 500 megahertz, the BAF will engage hardware and software time-gating techniques. The BAF is capable of producing quiet zone isolations down to 100 megahertz, allowing it to cater to programs of all sorts. Another advantage of testing at the BAF is that it can generate more RF threat types or denser high-fidelity RF threat environments than open air ranges can. As military technology changes, the BAF can adapt with those changes more flexibly than an open air range could, making the work here more important than ever. Some of the test types completed at the BAF include RF threat environment generation, radar target and electronic countermeasures environment simulation, CNI simulators, GPS simulation and test, RF environment monitoring system, electromagnetic environmental effects, and antenna pattern and isolation measurements. 
Data collection can be far more efficient testing in the bath than in an open air range. For example, the number of test points recently executed during a two week period in the bath would have taken over nine months and 40 flights. This level of efficiency saved the program immense costs and resources, while still gathering data just as effectively as an open air range. Testing in the bath is thought of as starting with a clean slate. The simulated battle space environment can be built to support the customer's needs in order to obtain data and information under the correct conditions. This great amount of control allows for repeatable test points and the ability to compare changes and what-if conditions. Testing in the bath is all about having control of the environment in order to obtain the specific data you need. Over the years, it has been used by many different developers, integrators, and testers of electronic combat systems, such as radar warning receivers and electronic countermeasures. It has also matured into a valuable tool for today's highly integrated weapon systems. The only question that remains is, how might such a powerful testing resource help you discover the data you need to elevate your program to new levels of performance?